Penguins win this game in either OT or a shootout, they are headed to the Stanley Cup playoffs officially. Dalvo gets a deflection, he scores! And you can lock the doors and turn out the lights. And for the 15th straight season, the Pittsburgh Penguins are headed to the Stanley Cup playoffs. They beat the Caps 5-4 as the Pittsburgh Penguins face the New York Islanders in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Phil Bork, Steve Mears, and Josh Getzoff will tell you everything you need to know as the Penguins embark on the path for championship number six on the road, presented by Lexus. The Pittsburgh Penguins have advanced to the Stanley Cup playoffs for the 15th consecutive season. They will eye their sixth Stanley Cup and we'll start to carve the path that could get them there here on the road presented by Lexus alongside the television voice of the Pittsburgh Penguins on AT&T Sportsnet, Steve Mears and the old 2-9er Phil Bork of the Penguins Radio Network and former Penguin. I am Josh Getzoff. Guys, I think Mearsy, when you look at 15 straight years, hearing it out loud sounds insane. Then you think about the obstacles within that, the salary cap, the coaching changes, the thoughts that maybe some guys within the Penguins were taking steps back, but here they are right on the cusp of trying to challenge for another cup. It's an amazing accomplishment and one that I hope we don't take for granted here because it's hard to make the playoffs. There are a lot of teams, there are franchises that are starving for a playoff berth and the Penguins have done it for 15 straight years. Uh, guys, the streak started 2007. Number one show on TV was American Idol. Number one song was Glamorous by Fergie Borky. I know you remember that one. Yeah, one of my favorites. And Tristan Jari was 11 years old in 2007 when that series or that streak began and the Penguins had the series against the Ottawa Senators. It's an amazing accomplishment. Four finals, three Stanley Cups. Hats off to the Penguins organization just for getting to this point here this year. Well, I start with 2007 also, uh, that first year. And boy, that was a humbling, humbling ride courtesy of the Ottawa Senators, but we learned very quickly here, and you're right, we don't take it for granted, not for one second, because we've been through some really hard times, some lean times, but what this team this year has done to make it 15 straight with the salary cap, with the injuries, with every hurdle and every procrastinator, everybody who is supposed to be a talking head said, Penguins in the Mass Mutual East, no way, they're not going to make the playoffs. I think that was fuel for their fire. And they are at the top of the Mass Mutual East Division as the dust settles on what has been a different regular season, different kind of calendar, different kind of world that we're living in right now. But, and the result of all that, a different kind of playoff setup as well, just to give you a kind of rundown on how things will work here in the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs. As we know, the league's been split up into four divisions. The first two rounds are gonna be all intra-division. You'll have one versus four, two versus three, and then the four teams that advance will reseed for the final two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs. They will be reseeded based on their regular season point total. So could see some interesting matchups in those Stanley Cup semifinal. And as we take a look at those other divisions around the league, I know Mirzi, a lot of people were so focused on the East Division and for good reason here in Pittsburgh. There are a lot of storylines, especially up north. Yeah, let's start with the All-Canadian Division. I mean, we've got a matchup between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens, one we haven't seen since 1979. I was not even alive. The only player who was alive was Zidane Ochara. When those two franchises, the iconic franchises, played the last time in the postseason, Toronto and Montreal, forever rivals. Uh, yeah, it's been an interesting division. And a lot of hype about Connor McDavid. Full marks to him, 100 points in 53 games. It's an amazing accomplishment. I don't care what division he's in. He's just superhuman. He's off to uh, an amazing start in his career. But guys, I think it's interesting that you almost have, like, it's like we have four different leagues. We don't know how these, these divisions are going to match up against one another. And Josh, you said it. We could have some really unique matchups in, say, the third round. Maybe it's Penguins Avalanche, for all we know. I mean, it's going to be really unique because these divisions have not faced each other and each one has taken on a style of its own. I'm going to look at the uh, Discover Central because that is just a fun, fun division. And we're going to get a little Florida flavor, man. Tampa and Florida. And one thing, it's sponsored by Discover. I discovered that the Florida Panthers are one heck of a hockey team. Joe Quenville down there. What's going to be interesting is Who's going to be the number one goalie? Is it going to be Bob? Is he going to be the guy? Uh, but Tampa Bay, as we know, defending champs, that they're not going to go quietly in the night getting Kucherov and Stamkos back. But also, how about the Nashville Predators? They were led dead on the side of the road. Everybody had them written off, and they have rallied, and they're going to give Carolina all they can handle. Jump over now to the Honda West Division. I think it's fair to say, guys, when you talk about some of the top teams and top contenders, 
two of them are at the top of the Honda West Division in the Vegas Golden Knights and Colorado Avalanche. Two teams vying for the President's Trophy, top record in the NHL, and of course, the top trophy in the NHL when it's all said and done, the Stanley Cup. But don't forget that team sliding right behind them. They've been quite a surprise. The Minnesota Wild, Kirill Kaprizov has quickly become one of those guys that if you haven't seen him, he's appointment television and he's charged the Wild up the standings. Billy Guerin's done a great job in adding some pieces there to make them a contender. And the St. Louis Blues, of course, have found their way into the mix once again. So that should be a bruising and battering four-team set to get out of the Honda West Division. And we wouldn't expect anything less here in these Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, the Penguins certainly have a tough road in front of them. As we mentioned, the East Division by many prognosticators thought to be the hardest in the National Hockey League coming into this season. Penguins have won it in the regular season, but what will it take for them to get through it in the postseason? We'll take a look at that when we come back here on The Road, presented by Lexus. This is The Road, presented by Lexus. The Pittsburgh Penguins once again in the Stanley Cup playoffs and division champions of the Mass Mutual East Division. First time they've captured a division crown since the 2013 14 season and Mirzi coming into this season. I think we all knew the East Division was going to have some familiar faces, seven different opponents for the Penguins across a 56 game schedule. But we got to know them really well head to head here across the last few months. We certainly did. That's a lot of games against the Capitals and the Flyers and the Devils and Rangers. Uh, first and foremost, the Penguins took care of business against some of the bottom feeders because there were teams that struggled, Buffalo and New Jersey. The Penguins did a good job of getting the points when they had to. And I look at the other playoff teams and I'll, I'll go Washington. First of all, speed, big time speed advantage. They took advantage of that and they were able to win six of the games. Islanders, I thought the talent just took over. They played smart and then it was just a matter of the Penguins having the game breakers like Crosby had a big series, Gensel, Russ, that whole line was fantastic, Latang and company. And the Boston Bruins, that was a tough matchup. And the reason why, I think, is because they're very evenly matched. Crosby, Bergeron, you've got McAvoy, Latang, good goaltending, two great coaches. So uh, that was the tough matchup, but it was really entertaining hockey. What a division. Certainly was, and the Penguins at the top of the heap when the dust settles in Borky. I think when the dust settles is a very interesting term because there was quite a lot of dust kicked up around the Penguins here, particularly in the beginning of the season with the unexpected resignation of Jim Rutherford towards the end of January. And then a couple new but familiar names and household names in the hockey world joining the ranks here in Ron Hextall and Brian Burke. Yeah, I, I still don't think there is a explanation. I think only Jimmy Rutherford really knows uh, why he wanted to step away. But yes, it was a, a quick move by the Penguins to bring in Ron Hextall and Brian Burke. And as, as much as they were kind of behind the scenes, Josh, I felt that their fingerprints are all over this team. I think just because of the presence that they have, the attitude that they have, they're both winners and they have a certain way that they go about their business. And I think that has slowly trickled down to this team that there's a certain expectation of the way you're gonna play under Burke and under Hextall. And it is a gritty, it is a resilient style. And I think it served the Penguins well. I remember talking to Brian Burke earlier this year and he said that he doesn't want to take any credit for anything that happened yeah, with the right. Penguins. There's a lot of talent in that dressing room and he said that if he heard people crediting him, he'd probably want to step up <laughs> and take a shot at him. Fair enough, but I think it's worth mentioning that since the end of February, really when those two became entrenched, when everything started to jive for the Penguins, they're 25-8-2. And they rode that to the top of the division and obviously home ice through the first two rounds of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So something to be said there for everything kind of coming together. Yeah, they were 5-5-1 five, five and one at the time of the hiring. So they were a 500 team. And some of those games, the first two in Philadelphia, they left those series looking like a flawed team. And I think the changes, whether it was intended or not, served as a wake-up call. It snapped the team to attention. And it's because you got a new boss. Everybody, you know, you want to impress the new management. And I thought that also really played into effect with the call-ups. You know, if you're a fringe guy who's coming up from Wilkes-Barre, you're on the taxi squad, you want to get involved and show that you belong with this team and in this league. So I think it just had a collective snapping of attention to everybody in the organization, especially with those call-ups. No, and I think also it brought the team together because they knew there were high expectations. They knew there could be ch uh, changes in the lineup. And I think players looked real hard at themselves and said, I want to be here. This is something special. I need to prove to Brian Burke and Ron Hextall, I want to be here. And I think the GMs read that. The GM 
and the president of Hockey Ops read that and they said, no, we're not going to make any changes. We see that these guys are a tight-knit group. We're going to stick mostly with the core and see if they can take us to the promised land. Well, you guys mentioned the taxi squad. That, of course, is one of the new wrinkles coming into this season. And we knew at some point or another we were going to see some names on that taxi squad, whether it be by injury or COVID-related issues. Thankfully, the Penguins didn't deal with a whole lot on the latter front. But on the injury front, it was a little bit of a different story this year for the Penguins. Over 270 man games lost to injury this season. But as a result of that, guys, we saw names like Freddie Goudreau, Redeem Zahorna, step in, step up, and, and give the Penguins much-needed jolts down the lineup. Full credit to the entire organization for the seamless nature where anybody that comes from Wilkes-Barre to the taxi squad working with Ty Hennis up to the big club, they know how the Penguins want to play, they know the identity, they know what the practices are like, and that message just resonates throughout the entire organization. So I think that's a big part of it. A lot of memorable firsts, right? First goals. How about P.O. Joseph in yeah. Long Island uh, with, at the Coliseum. Mark Friedman against the team that waved him. The Flyers scored his first NHL goal. Radim Zahorna. Anthony Angelo wasn't his first NHL goal, but his first goal this season was uh, in Buffalo where he basically grew up. So that's one thing that'll really stand out. The memorable first goals that we saw this year. You always remember the first goals for some of these guys, but this year it seemed like we had a bunch and there was always a unique storyline to it. Lots of fun brought by those guys. A lot of fun, and you're right. It seemed like every game every game we were doing, yeah. there'd be another injury, and you'd look at me, and I, we'd look go, again, like, what is going on here? But you're right. Guys would just plug and play. It didn't matter. And the, the great thing about this team, they have so many players that are multidimensional, right, guys? They can play left wing, right wing, center, uh, and they're just plug and play guys. And uh, I think uh, this team has more depth than most other teams that the Penguins have had. You go back to 16 and 17, yeah, there were depth here, but I don't know if there's another team, Penguin team in recent history, that has had much depth at so many positions as this Penguin team. We're talking about right now, and I hate to use the term, if Mike Sullivan sees this, I'm sorry in advance, a fourth <laughs> line of Teddy Bluger, Brandon Tanev, and Zach Aston Reese. That uh, kind of defines the depth that the Penguins have right now, but that's the fourth line. We know the top line has jolted the Penguins all season long. Jake Gensel, Sidney Crosby and Brian Russ. Penguins led the league in goals this season, 193 goals for. That trio accounted for 69 of them. Mirza. Wow, 20 goal scorers there. All three work really hard, and we know about the skills that they all possess and can bring a lot of speed. So it, it makes a lot of sense that it's clicked. Penguins, of course, will match up with the New York Islanders in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The other series, guys, is just as interesting. Boston Bruins and Washington Capitals, and we look forward to them beating each other up uh, in, in route to trying to win. Yeah, advance. two physical teams, two big teams. You got the Chara factor. He's going up against his former squad. So uh, we know that if you want to win the Stanley Cup, you want to come out of this division, you're going to have to go through two really, really tough teams. So whatever happens in that series, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for the winner of the Penguins Islanders series. And uh, yeah, hopefully it goes seven. Hopefully there's plenty of triple overtime and hopefully the hits totals are through the roof because if the Penguins can advance, then maybe they'll face a battered Capitals or Bruins team. No, in their styles. No, I'm hoping for seven games, kick the snot out of each other. I hope that Dana Chara is cross-checking Bergeron in the face, just like he used to with Sidney Crosby. And yeah, if the Penguins can get past the Islanders, hopefully those teams are both de dealing with a lot of injuries too. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I hope it goes seven. Well, you kind of understand the landscape a little bit more as it pertains to the Penguins and their quest for the Cup here this spring. Now we'll get into their matchup. The Penguins and the New York Islanders going to face off in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. That preview after these messages on The Road, presented by Lexus. Welcome back to The Road, presented by Lexus. The Penguins and New York Islanders set to duel in the Stanley Cup playoffs for the sixth meeting all time. The Penguins one and four against the Islanders. Beat them back in the 2012-2013 Eastern Conference quarterfinals, but this will be the second time in the last three years they matched up against the Isles in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And we all know how it went in 2019. We'll quickly erase that one from the memory, a four-game sweep at the hands of the Islanders. All right, Mirzi, when you look at this matchup, New York, obviously an interesting opponent for the Penguins on a lot of levels. Who are you looking at in particular in their lineup? First of all, you had to bring up the Islanders history with the Penguins. Oh, it's just, I thought we're done with Nassau Coliseum, right? When we left there the last time in the regular season. Oh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's a, we know it's a rough history. 75, 82, 93. I don't want to ruin the show. We don't have to get into that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a great series. My player to watch is Jake Gensel. One of my favorite Penguin stats to give is the fact that Jake Gensel has 25 goals in 45 playoff games. It's an incredible accomplishment. 13 as a rookie, 
and of course won the Stanley Cup 2017, four in one game against Philadelphia Flyers a few years ago. Clutch ability, show up in a big moment. Everybody on that line, big game Brian Russ, Sidney Crosby, Jake Gensel, they have that trait in their game. And on our broadcast, I like to say he's like a ghost. He just, he's in one spot, you think you have him covered, and then he disappears, and within one second, he's open, bang, Crosby pass, puck in the back of the net. He's the ghost, and uh, it does it in the playoffs, and has always been able to step up. Has scored in almost every series he has ever played in, except for one. So, uh, Jake Gensel, game breaker, and this is his time of year. He's my player to watch on the Penguin side. Dorothy? Well, get the Jake shakes ready, right? If, uh, if your boy is going, let's get him going, man. Uh, the Jake shakes, but my guy for the Penguins is Mr. Carter, Jeff Carter. He's been there before, he's done that. And when you look down the middle of the ice, Penguins are solid. So are the New York Islanders. But you put Jeff Carter against Jean-Gabriel Pajot, you're talking a big size difference right there. And also, I think with this being his first playoffs with the Penguins, he's gonna dress to impress. He's gonna want to do something special in this series. I think he will, uh, because he's been there before. He's won two Stanley Cups before, and he knows it's usually the big guys, the guys that have been there before, to get this team through the first round and build that belief within the locker room. I've heard a lot leading up to this series about one area the Islanders have the clear-cut advantage in is in goal. Simeon Varlamov's had a great year. Ilya Sorokin has handled himself well in his first NHL season. But I must be missing something. Tristan Jari had himself quite a season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. 25 victories this year in his first year as the number one guy. By the way, that's tied with Marc-Andre Fleury for third most in the National Hockey League. So he held himself pretty well. And when he went head-to-head -head against the Islanders, he was 5-1. So he's had a lot of success against these guys. Of course, a lot pertains to how he performs in the postseason, which we don't have a whole lot of a book on. One game against the Montreal Canadiens last year in the qualifying round. Otherwise, we'll see how he performs this year is really going to be the dictator for how he stands on that front. Mirzis, we turn our attention to the New York Islanders. Who sticks out for you on their roster? A couple of players, two for the price of one, and both former New Jersey Devils that have played very well in their career against the Penguins, Travis Ajak and Kyle Palmieri. Remember, we have not seen the Islanders with those two in the fold, and they actually didn't play all that well. And down the stretch, the Islanders kind of stumbled a little bit. I wonder if that disrupted the chemistry. They certainly miss Anders Lee, and those two aren't going to replace their captain. But uh, two guys, though, I think back to their days with the Devils, Travis Ajak, most career points, against the Penguins in his career, against any other opponent, and Palmieri is second against the Penguins uh, as far as head-to-head uh, -head matchups and points against Pittsburgh. So uh, two unique players that always seem to play well against Pittsburgh, but I wonder how that changes the dynamic. Definitely gives them more forward depth, different options there, but there's no replacement for Anders Lee. It's just an interesting wrinkle for me because we haven't seen it yet. Of all the matchups, Penguins Islanders, we did not see Zajac and Palmieri in Islanders uniforms. It's been a while since we've seen these guys, yeah. Yeah, since the, uh, the end of March, I think, was the last time we played them. But really, the guy for me for the New York Islanders, it just seems like whenever the Islanders beat the Penguins, you look at the score sheet, there he is, Jordan Everly. And in that series that you referenced in 2019, he was a one-man wrecking crew. And I think he's a guy that's, he's a little bit like Jake Gens, a little ghost-like, are you talking about, Mirzi, where he kind of hides in the weeds and he pops in, he pops out. Uh, he's not the biggest guy on the ice. And I think he's a guy you gotta be really physical against, but also, when you jump over the boards, you better know where Jordan Eberle is. The Islanders have a guy that has quickly become one of the more dangerous names in the National Hockey League. Penguins know him well, unfortunately, because he's had a lot of success against them head to head. Matt Barzell is the guy I'm watching on the New York Islanders in this series. In that series back in 2019, he had five points in four games, and he's gotten a lot of experience on the playoff stage for the Islanders the last couple of years. Obviously, Islanders advancing to the second round in 2019. Last year, going all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. So he's had these kind of building moments on this level in his career, and of course, He's performed as well. He's led the Isles with 45 points this year. Has that puck on the string ability as we see when he's in the attacking zone. A guy the Penguins have to be aware of. Definitely a game breaker for New York throughout this entire series. Which brings us to how we round out our thoughts on this series, Mirzi. Penguins trying to advance to the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's been a couple of seasons since they've seen that part of the Stanley Cup picture. How do they get past the Islanders? If they defend defense, that is the way to win in the postseason. That's the way to beat the New York Islanders. So for me, it's they will advance if they're able to defend, which they didn't do two years ago. Uh, but I saw a lot of good signs with the Penguins down the stretch. They did have three shutouts in their final eight games. And I point to the one nothing win at home against the Boston Bruins, the three nothing win in Washington. Those are the blueprints 
for winning in the postseason. They completely shut down those two teams. Very good teams, too, and good offensive teams. That's the blueprint. That's how it's going to be, especially against the New York Islanders, because that's their M.O., and it's defense. It's a Barry Trotz coach team, so they love to play those low-scoring games. Penguins have to defend well. Kind of patience and persistence for the Penguins in this series. I love the way you're thinking. I'm going to go a little different route, though, Mirzi. I'm going to go to special teams, because the New York Islanders, especially their penalty kill, one of the tops in the league, super aggressive. And we know we just got Geno back. We'll see if that Penguins power play can keep on humming. Uh, and they, they had, do have a good second unit with Jared McCann on it. But also the New York Islanders power play, not all that in the bag of chips. They don't generate a lot of offense from their defensemen. Nick Letty's not a guy that scores a lot of goals. He's more of a puck distributor. So special teams will be huge in this series. You guys are just letting me tie all this in together. You say offense from the defense. You're mentioning defense just in general. I'm going with the defense for the Penguins, the blue line, because I think that if they add that offensive element that they have all season here in this first round in these Stanley Cup playoffs, it's another way that the Islanders won't be able to handle as far as a four-line attack, you know, accentuated from the back end for the Penguins. We know they were top five in the league from production on the blue line this season. Got 28 goals from their blue line. I think that kind of aspect to the overall approach for the Penguins going into this series could definitely push the needle in their favor. And we should mention, guys, Penguins, of course, going to have home ice advantage in this series. And it will be really interesting to see how much of a role that plays because we know PPG Paints Arena can be rocking once the fans these get These players love playing in front of these fans. It, it's something about the energy in this building from the goaltender on out. And yes, it will be a major factor in Nassau. Last year for that, right, Mirzi? You've been there many times before. That would be a rock and roll in place. Home ice is huge in this, this round. I told you I thought we were done with Nassau Coliseum, but it's going to be tough. But you want to go into those tough environments. And uh, yeah, this is as tough as it gets here. PPG Paints Arena, what a season at home for the Pens. Playoff hockey in Pittsburgh, nothing like it. Two words synonymous with changing of the seasons, energy in the city, energy in the building. It's a great time of year. Can't wait to get going. And the hope is that we have a parade at the end. Let's hope that is the hope for the Penguins. 22 wins here on home ice this season. They'll hope to get 16 here this spring into summer as they look to capture what would be the franchise's sixth Stanley Cup. I want to thank all of our crew behind the scenes. And for Steve Mears and Phil Bork, I'm Josh Getzoff. Enjoy the playoffs, everybody.